Hi, Rama. It's week six, day one of our Bible narrative reading plan, and today we're in Genesis chapters 32 and 33. We pick up with Jacob as he is now finally leaving the land of his father-in-law Laban after 20 years, uh, and now he's headed back toward the land of Canaan. But who waits for him there? That is his brother Esau. The last time we saw Esau, 20 years earlier, Esau was vowing revenge and murder upon Jacob because of his deception, because of what happened with the, the birthright and the blessing. And so uh, Jacob begins approaching uh, the land, and he recognizes that Esau is coming with a caravan. Verse 6 of 32 says that messengers come, and they let Jacob know, hey, Esau's coming, and there are 400 men with him. Now, that sounds like that Esau has an army that he's coming to attack. If you remember when Abraham went and rescued Lot, uh, he had his own private army, and that numbered about 318 soldiers. And so here for the fact that Esau is coming with 400, that strikes fear in Jacob's heart. He's not sure how he will be received by his brother. Notice what Jacob does. He prays in verse 9, and uh, he refers to God as God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac. Then he says, O Lord, who said to me. We're seeing a change in Jacob's heart. And Jacob uh, is not only referring to God as the God of his father and his grandfather, but he says, this is also my God, the God who has spoken to me. And he prays a very humble prayer, asking for God's deliverance. But then we see that uh, Jacob's still struggling a little bit to fully trust God um, because in verses 13 through uh, 21, he divides his family, his possessions, everything he has up in, into two sections. This makes sense. Uh, in our normal way of thinking, but again, it would show that Jacob isn't fully trusting God, that God will deliver him, um, because if, if he believes that God will deliver him, then he doesn't have to split his possessions up into two camps, but we certainly understand from a human standpoint uh, why he does that. But then that night, something fascinating happens. It's just Jacob. He sent uh, everyone, all of his family, across the Jabbok River, and he's left there alone, and uh, during the night, someone begins to wrestle with him. It's the most interesting statement. It just says, And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. And when the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. And then he said, Let me go, for the day is broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. What a fascinating story. We don't fully understand what's going on there. We know that uh, we saw earlier that God appeared to Abraham in, in, at the Oaks of Mamre in a human form. And it seems that here also God comes to Jacob in a human form. And he wrestles with Jacob throughout the entire night. And Jacob can't prevail, he can't win, but he doesn't give up. Uh, he's hanging on to what we now understand to be God and human flesh, rec wrestling with him uh, because he knows that he needs the blessing of God. Uh, Jacob has wrestled with many people in his life. He has wrestled in deception against his brother Esau, against his own family, many other people he's wrestled with, but now he's wrestling with God because he knows that he needs God's blessing. He leaves from the Jabbok River. Jacob leaves forever changed. He will always walk with a limp, and it's always a reminder that he has wrestled with God. Jacob leaves there changed. He has a new name. His name is now Israel, which means that he strives with God. And so Jacob, now being changed, must continue on his way to meet with Esau. And we see how Esau acts in deference towards his brother. He doesn't have to do this. Um, because, remember, even his, his father and mother both recognized, uh, because of the message of God, that Jacob will actually rule over Esau, that Esau will serve his, old, uh, his younger brother, the older will serve the younger, and yet Jacob acts in a very deferential manner. He's very submissive to his brother. He's very kind. He, he sends everyone in his party, he sends welcoming gifts, and he sends uh, his family ahead just so that he can uh, see what a family man that he's become. He can see how God has blessed him, and, and Jacob is acting in a very generous way towards his brother, giving him great gifts. But when they, when they meet and when they uh, see one another, Esau runs to him, and he embraces him. And when we expect there to be a fight, there's not. There's reconciliation. Uh, Esau does, is not there. 
uh, to, har to harm Jacob, even if he did perhaps begin that way, I'm not sure, uh, based on that number 400 men with him, whatever his intentions were at the beginning, by the time he meets Jacob, his heart has softened, uh, softened toward his brother. And then uh, Esau tells him, come on, let, go with me, go back to our homeland uh, together. And, and Jacob defers on, on that. He, he says, no, uh, no I'll, I'll catch up with you later, basically. And we see that Jacob actually doesn't go uh, back to Seir, where Esau is. He goes to a different place. And at the very end of the chapter, uh, he erects an altar at the same place where uh, Abraham had built an altar. And, and the name of that altar, he means God, the God of Israel. Again, showing the significant name change uh, for Jacob, showing that God is blessing Jacob in, in ways that he doesn't deserve, in ways that we would not expect, but because God is preserving uh, his covenant, God is protecting his people, and out of, uh, of Jacob's line will one day become uh, Jesus in human flesh, and so that we will see that truly God will take on human flesh, never uh, to cast it off again, and uh, Christ will come to abide with us, and it all comes from this line of Jacob. Here's a summary of today's reading. For more information, go to tunemyheart.org.